Hello viewers, welcome to another episode. Uh, before we get started on this short teardown, I uh, just want to say if you are subscribed to my channel, that's fantastic, thank you very much. If you're not, you should click the subscribe button and if you are subscribed, then you probably want to consider clicking the little bell icon that's next to the subscribe button because if you don't click that, then YouTube might just not tell you that I've released a video, so little tip there. So we're just gonna do a quick teardown on this item we have here. Um, again, this has been provided by my Patreon supporters, so thank you very much to them. Um, this is an Omeda Biox 3700E pulse oximeter. So what this is designed to do is give a readout of the level of oxygen saturation in blood and give a pulse rate. So uh, only does two things really. Things are now uh, so small, that literally on eBay, you can pick these up. They're not much bigger than the little finger probe that you use on them. <laughs> I have an OLED screen for a tenner. So these things uh, uh, really don't look like this anymore. This is quite an old, uh, an old design. Um, I think this actually dates from the 1980s, this particular design. Um, I think this unit it comes from the mid 1990s. So it was obviously in production for quite a while. So you might have seen these or have probably had them done where um, you have them stuck over your finger um, and it reads out the oxygen saturation and uh, your pulse rate. So, so I picked this up off eBay. It was sold as not working and indeed I have done a quick try. I plugged a power cable in the back of it and you press the power standby button and it, the back lights light up. There's nothing on the displays and um, then it, Sometimes it stays on and then most of the time when you let go of the power button, it just switches off. So um, when we go through this, uh, if there's anything simple that might uh, solve that problem, I might try and fix it. But um, I kind of suspect that uh, this is just going to be a quick tear down. So as you can see here, um, you have uh, the probe, which is uh, just a little finger probe with the uh, bits inside. I'll explain how that works in a moment. Um, we've got a plug which plugs in on the front panel. Um, obviously you can see here it's gone um, a bit yellow, so that's uh, certainly showing its age. Um, it's just a, seems to be just a plastic case. I think there should be a tilting bale which goes on the side here. Um, that has departed company. Um, now we do have a bit of writing on the top here. Uh, might be a bit bright for you to see. Uh, we have Elmstead Day Unit, uh, which is an NHS um, facility uh, near Chelmsford I think so that's obviously where this used to be used so we have uh, two LCD screens on the front here I think they are both graphic LCDs I'm not entirely sure because as I can't get it really to turn on I can't tell and um, we've got a number of uh, buttons along the front here power uh, waveform this this will actually give you a little moving chart of the uh, um, blood saturation uh, oxygen saturation sorry um, and pulse display and all that sort of stuff. So, and obviously you can set alarms and stuff like that. Um, underneath here, we've got a little contrast wheel for the LCDs, um, some little feet, and there's, there's something rattling around inside. It's not always not. It's not always a good sign. Uh, on the back, we've got a, a large earth earthing point um, digital interface, which I believe is um, RS232. Um, we've got a pulse rate output and an SPO2 output as well. Um, I believe those are for connecting up to a chart recorder. So little other little, other little details are we've got um, three year warranty ends April 1996. I think that is somewhat expired now. Uh, mains input with voltage switchable input there. And that's pretty much it. Big long screws there. Um, quite clearly, we've got threaded inserts in the plastic case. So we've just got a plastic, plastic lid. Right. Let's just have a quick look around. We've got a, a large mains transformer in the back there, with all the different uh, wires up for the uh, selecting the different voltages. Um, looks like we've just got literally just one one output from the transformer running into 
the circuit board. Um, there is actually th three um, boards that are sandwiched on top of each other. Uh, so we'll have a look at what's underneath in a moment. Number of wires. We've got what might be a voltage regulator down there screwed onto the back panel. The RS232 port and a couple of connectors running down to the other boards and over to the front panel. Uh, yeah, we've got a couple of LCD modules on there. Uh, we shall have a look at those in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, that looks like the input input module and it looks like we have space for a battery as well with some terminals well um, actually that positive one is only partly there it's half of it's disappeared so we've got a little spot here which is quite clearly where the a battery would have screwed and mounted into um, that's obviously been removed at some point um, I think it was definitely installed this one scuff marks down in there so I think the battery has been removed at some point now we've got another transformer on the board there I wonder given the age of this it might the backlight might be electroluminescent so that might be the transformer that does the backlight let's have a look down there <laughs> uh, yeah there's a huge great big burn mark down in the back here Huge great big burn mark, and we have a uh, Schaffner main, mains filter. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it looks like uh, yet another failure of those Schaffner mains filters. Horrible things. Um, yeah, so that's obviously completely thrown the toys out of the pram. Um, I did actually have it. I did actually plug it in. So, um, usually the these actually have an embedded. Um, filter capacitor in and it's those that fail just like they do um, I think I showed you on the was it the last video? I can't remember now um, but once they fail they tend to fail open circuit anyway so it probably wouldn't have made too much of a difference so quite clearly we've got the mains coming in here into a mains transformer that then outputs onto, onto here and then we've got uh, which is probably a little power supply section here, which probably also did recharging of that internal battery as well. So uh, um, whether that's at fault, I'm not sure, but we can certainly do a quick check of that. The battery wires come and link in onto the same connector that the, um, the low voltage AC is coming from the power supply. I've just noticed there's uh, a little setting switch here which is labeled 3700 and 3710 so i wonder whether it's just a little switch to change it to a different model well i think what i'm going to do just so i can have a look at those pcbs underneath is just remove the connectors off here and uh, take out this top top board and see what's underneath Right, that's the top circuit board. Looks like so they've actually integrated uh, standoffs into the PCB, which is uh, quite unusual. Not seen that that before. It's surprising how many wires and connections there are on this. And they certainly didn't skimp with the uh, the connectors, having all these lovely IDC connectors on there. So that seems to be the main logic board. Um, I suspect then the, there's going to be an analog board underneath. So we've just got a metal separator plate with um, plastic, plastic covering on it, um, probably just to insulate it.
So this uh, is obviously the um, analog input board. Uh, we've got a little interface on the front, on the side here. I'm not quite sure why that's like that. Um, maybe they needed to add something in, um, and the where that connector would have gone to this. I wonder whether they needed to put something in between to do something. So yeah, a little bit of looks a little bit of an afterthought that one. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of analog stuff going on here. There is actually um, some digital. We've got uh, a Harris um, or Intercell 12-bit uh, A to D converter. That's just there. Uh, we've got another EEPROM up the top there. Um, unusual to see on this board. Um, it could be there's like a little state machine thing going on uh, with this. Often, obviously, have you can have lookup tables and things in inside EEPROMs and uh, uh, big connector over to the. Uh, digital the CPU board yeah it's absolutely enormous for what it's doing uh, and that is pretty much it um, I spotted one little adjustment knob on there um, in the user guide it did mention that there's a uh, an accessible um, calibration adjustment and um, yeah there's a hole just there and it um, that probably does line up about right for that uh, that adjustment there um, can't see anything immediately um, broken or up well, with it, so there's obviously uh, a component gone bad somewhere. Um, I don't think it's going to be worth trying to fix it, given that you can buy these uh, kind of things on eBay for a tenner, um, and they're a lot smaller. Right, so on the CPU board, uh, we have uh, that um, AD7522LN, and that is a 10-bit A to D converter, so we've got another one on there, um, number of 74 series stuff, um, two EEPROMs, um, and we've got an AMD Z8002 uh, microprocessor. And just below the EEPROMs, we have two um, static RAMs. Those are 8K each. Um, so we've got 16K of uh, RAM on this. Um, SRAMs are quite often used in uh, stuff like this because uh, you don't need all that uh, DRAM refresh nonsense going on. So um, even though they do cost more, it just makes these uh, kinds of designs a bit simpler because you just don't need uh, to worry about refreshing um, the memory, it's all just there um, and easily accessible to uh, to a small microcontroller. I've got a crystal down in the bottom corner there. Um, 3.6 megahertz it looks like. Again, can't see anything wrong on this board either. So, yeah, whatever is wrong is uh, there's obviously just some component gone, gone fizzle somewhere. I can't see any any signs of anything physically wrong with it. Oh, uh, one last thing. Uh, this chip here is a um, CMOS UART, so that's obviously providing that RS-232 interface. Okay, so let's move this out of the way and we'll have a look at the display board. Oh, we'll just uh, pick this up and I've just found this rattling around. That was obviously the bit that was uh, made it a bit of a rattle at the beginning. Um, looks like the connector off that uh, battery terminal um, all gone horribly green and that's been rattling around inside the unit so uh, that could well be what's what's killed it it only needs to rattle around on the wrong in the wrong places and it'll probably short something out so that's quite possibly what uh, what killed it so we've got the front panel here um, another connector so we've got the Connector that runs out to the actual probes. Um, we've got a connector that ran over to the circuit board there. So looks like we're pulling in all the the digital. Um, another little daughter board which connects through to the large graphic display on the front. Interesting. There is actually um, on the silk screen there, just down in there. It actually says DSP2. So I wonder what this board is actually doing. Um, let's just take off these labels and see what it says. So on this board here we have uh, a device which looks suspiciously like um, the Hitachi controllers that you see on the back of LCDs. Uh, we've got a Sanyo device uh, that is an LC3517. And that is another static RAM. Um, it looks to be 2K static RAM. And then the device next to it is a HD 
61830A00. Okay, yeah, that is a dot matrix liquid crystal graphic display controller that stores display data sent from an 8-bit microcontroller in uh, external RAM to generate dot matrix liquid crystal driving signals. So yeah, this a uh, little little bit of uh, RAM as a uh, as like um, I don't know video memory if you want to call it that, and um, yeah, a little controller chip. So yeah, it's kind of interesting, and that runs over onto the LCD panel with. Um, the normal LCD driver bits on it. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I might actually pull that off and save that. Might be, might be worth having a play with that at some point. And over on the other end, uh, we've got uh, um, two devices underneath this um, ribbon cable. Um, that will most likely be the membrane buttons that are on the front. And we've got two devices down in there. Actually, I've just noticed that says DSP1. DSP2. Oh, I wonder whether that's not actually digital signal processor. It's more display one and display two. Um, so these devices are ICM 7232BFIPL. And uh, yeah, not surprising, those, those are LCD drivers. Um, the 7232, which is what is in here drives 10 digits of seven segments with two independent unicators per digit address and data input in serial format. Looks like there is actually uh, an LCD panel soldered onto the other side of the board there. You can see the pins poking through from the other side. Right, uh, well, there's not really much more to see in there now, so we'll have a quick look at this uh, finger probe. Um, so it's a very simple molded bit of plastic uh, with a, um, will be um, an infrared and a, a red LED in and um, the way these work is they, they measure the depending on the level of the uh, oxygen saturation in the blood um, it will either pass or attenuate uh, infrared light and red light and they work opposite so so when it's passing infrared light it's blocking uh, red light and vice versa simple thing to measure it seems so uh, yeah we just got to two light sources and a sensor. So let's see if we can just pop this apart a little bit. So that looks like it's the two uh, LEDs providing the light sources. And then on this side, we have a light sensor. So there we have uh, what is probably a little photodiode. And there is the light source. So we've just got three wires, so there'll just be a common ground and then one white each to the infrared and one to the red. So I hope you found this very quick teardown interesting. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up, share it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.